Okay, so welcome back, and we're doing the billet runners, and we're gonna do the second operation now. Um, something I found interesting that I'm gonna put a picture up to now is the amount of material we've taken off on op one. So have a look at this. Okay, so as you can see, the material starts off at just over 20 kilos, and after op one, we're at just over 10 kilos. So we've removed 10 kilos of material in the two hour machining time. It was one hour, 57 minutes, I think, to do everything I did in op one. Um, and we've halved the weight of the billet that we started with. So for op two, I've decided that I'm gonna sit it in the vice still. Now, I machined the bottom face so it was true when I ran the top face. So once this section was done, we've got two parallel faces here. And what I've decided to do is sit it back in the vise this way. If you imagine it's sitting like that. And I'm going to come and take all the material off of here that I can. And ramp in with a 12 mil, uh, sorry, with a 16 mil end mil. And take away everything I can to roughly halfway. Not gonna finish it. We're gonna do that all in one go. Um, but we're gonna take out half the material that we can get to. It comes down to just about the top. You start seeing this. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing as op two. And here's the tool path for it. So first off, it faces it. Just change this quickly, sorry. Right, there we go. It was on the wrong one there. So, have a minute. We didn't do the facing up. Okay. So it comes in, oh, it did do the facing up, I think. So it comes in and it faces off across the stock. Now there isn't really a lot to touch. It's gonna to touch off just on the top of the center section there and take the top off there. Now that is the finished level. And now you see the 16 mil mm start coming in and doing what it's doing. Now there's probably a few tweaks. Now this is gonna do a 12 mil step over and a five mil depth for cut with this end mil. I'm hoping that's not too much. It's a 16 mil diameter end mill, 40 mil flute length. So I'm hoping that leaves it rigid enough to not really rattle around. But there's the general gist. So you can see it's taken out most of the material on the top and the sides. And it's basically halfway down before we flip it over. And again, it's just to get weight off of it. Um, before we go any further and turn it over. On the other side, I want to get it as minimal weight as possible. When you're holding it in a vise, it's going to be more secure. So we've just loaded our program here and we have the material in the vise here. Now these are super smooth steel jaws held up against the finished face. Now, if for example, this leaves a mark across this part of the face here, when I machine this, I'll leave like 0.2 on top of it and I will face that after the fact at the end. But also for the minute, we've already got a couple of marks in here. I'm gonna see if this way is a good way to do it. Cause the other way I could do it is I could have it already mounted to the trunnion and just, or the full axis table, I call it a trunnion and just flip it up onto its side and have it held there whilst I'll do this op. But it's not going to be as rigid, bolted on here, hanging all this material off. So I want to do this side, flip it over again, get that material off the other side, because we'll probably reduce it from, we've gone from 20 kilos to 10 kilos, roughly, to this. And I bet you by the two, if I do this side and that side, it will probably take another sort of four or five kilos off. So this is how we're going to start it. As op two.
unfortunately can't see much of you right now and it kind of cuts fresh air to start with because obviously we've already removed most of the material just going to nick the top now ever so slightly and obviously it will take a fair bit more material when it gets to the back there that's the only bit that's got a bit of meat left on it this side was almost to the extent of the stock there. I let that take a hefty cut because it isn't really doing much other than one pass so that's the true height and finished height of this back section there so now we go on to the 16 mil mm mil and i'm not sure how it's gonna um i'm not sure how it's gonna cut in the sense of whether five mil is actually gonna be too much or not enough. Started right at the front there, I just wanna have a little look. Because it's starting right on the front edge. I just want to see where it's starting here. It does show it on that front edge, to be fair. I just want to see where it's coming in. So the last thing I want to do is... Oh, right. okay. So it's starting over the front, but it's going to work its way towards the back. I didn't want it to try and plunge into something that it shouldn't do. So let's just have a go here. So we're doing a... 2,000 millimetres a minute feed rate, 6,500 RPM. Not much on the spindle load on the back side, but a minute ago it was at around 50% when it was cutting at the front side. And there you go. So that's 12 millimetre engagement with a 5 mil step down. So if it stays like that, it sounds okay. Um, when it starts going in between the runners, it will circle interpolate uh, helix down into the cuts. So if I'm around 50, 50, 50 60% low, and it sounds good like this, I'm not worried about this tool breaking, I think it'll be okay. Um, I could shorten this tool up in the holder, but it's sticking out from one of the other ops, so I'm going to leave it for now, and we'll see what happens. So uh, yeah, this has got a 45 minute or a 50 minute run time. So I'll bring you back and I'll show you what it's like when it's finished. Fingers crossed it all goes well, no more broken tools. Okay, so op two is finished. That was 45 minutes. Um, I think it's about 45 minute, 50 minute cycle time. I did adjust some bits. So we've done the whole lot with this 16 mil end mil. And I probably could have gone a bit lower to be fair but this is how it's roughed out. Now we've left half a millimetre on everything because obviously we're gonna come back and we're gonna finish everything with a ball nose. But what I'm gonna do while it's in here, I'm quite happy with how it come out to be fair. Um, I'm quite impressed with that. What we're gonna do while it's in there, if we come across, need a good clean out. If we get this one, this is obviously Put that down there nice and careful. Okay, so you can see this is how it's gonna be here. Now, these two center sections, I can probably just go in with that 16 mil end mil, just come down there, leave half a mil radially, and go as deep axially as I can. Let's just hold it up and be super careful. So I can go through that pocket like that, machine that center section out completely. 
then I can machine this one out, exactly the same, one either side. And then here, if you imagine looking dead straight down, I'll do the same, but if the 16 mil end mill will clear, I don't know if it will to be fair, I might have to go smaller, I'm not sure, but I'll basically come round that profile leaving half a millimetre, just again in the 2D pattern, just come straight down with a 2D pocket basically, or contour, following that as deep as I can get that end mill in there, and do there and there. Again, that'll clean material off. And then I'll do the same on this edge, because obviously there's nothing here, we are fresh air. So I can cut off this big chunk of material here, and this bit here can go, and the same on the other side. We can get rid of a big chunk of this. Um, I'll only go halfway, or say that, I won't go halfway, sorry. I'll only go down so I'm just above the vise to get rid of what I can. And then that will be there. Done, nothing else to do on this side. So if we can clear these four slots and get rid of these edges, I'll call that good on op two. But as you can see, it's starting to look um, a bit more like the end product. I'm quite happy with how it's going so far and no major dramas as yet. Fingers crossed we can keep it that way, but if things happen, that's why I've got spare material. So as long as we learn and we can solve the issues and I can carry on forward, then it's the end result that counts on the others, not on this one. This one is a uh, practice. So fingers crossed, cheers for watching. I'll bring you back when I've done the rest of this or whilst it's cutting and show you what it comes out like. Okay, so we're still on op two, still got the piece of billet in the machine. And whilst I'm here for a quick, simple material removal, I've decided to create this sketch. And for these areas that are gonna be cleared, I'm gonna drill holes. So we've got these fuel rail mounting points that are gonna be machined from the other side mainly. But um, obviously we've got a nice area here to clear. So 20 mil hole, 20 mil hole, four holes, four holes, and another two on this edge. So we can put them in there um the 12 holes are three minutes so you're moving a decent bit of material for only a three minute cycle time and when we flip it over it's just somewhere for the chips to go and i may still come down and do a little bit of these pockets from this side i'm not sure yet but we're going to put the holes in i'll come and show you at the machine quickly so yeah there's the material so we've got the clearance height the top of the part plus 20, 50 mil, something like that, plenty of clearance. So there will be two holes on each of the outside bits and four holes on the inners. And we're going um, minus 90 millimetres from the top. The material's 100 millimetres, so from there to the bed of the vice is 100 mil. So we'll be 10 mil off the bed. We're not gonna fully clear on this pit here, initially, on this very first hole. But when we flip it over and we start machining some of this away, obviously the hole will appear, but you'll still have at least You'll have three holes clear on the centres and one hole on the um, outside too. So we're going to do them holes and then I'm going to look at taking off some of this material. See what I can do to remove some of that. So let's just quickly load. Still using the USB like shown in the other videos. Where I just go onto list programs and type VF3.NC. So that's what I call every program. It's the only way the machine reads the USB. And then it will pop up with your actual name. So now we can go there, op to, she's in. We've done a spin warm up, 5% rapid. I just put my feed rate down to 50% because I just wanna see where I'm at. Takes ages for the spigot to do its first kind of calibration. Okay, so what I want to do on here, I want to go over to the G54, currently at minus eight.
Now this one should have broken through. What I want to be able to do is just see under there for as and when it goes through. Because we've got a pocket full of coolant. Right, so that's now broken through. You can see it pop out down there. And I want to make sure my very expensive vices don't get touched. See it coming out down there. And it didn't touch the bottom. So now I'll put the coolant back on and we'll run it. And we know we should be good because the last thing you want to do is drill into the bed of your vice. Now on these ones, these holes at the back, I've actually moved them further this way. And again, the reason that was done is because I didn't want the top taper of the drill touching that highest part of the material at the back there. So I'm calling back on, carry on. All the holes are gonna go through to the same depth. And that's where we wanted to make sure we cleared. If the hole was in the original position, when I first done the drawing, that taper of that U-drill would gouge into the back of the part. So now I know we're good. We'll run that. That says it's about three minutes cycle time. I'll go back over to the laptop and I'll start looking at what I can do to either remove some material from the middle, uh, doing a, like an inside contour, and see what material I can remove on the outside before we then flip the part over and have a look at what we're going to do for on three. So I'll bring you back in a minute. Okay, so we're clearing a little bit more material. We drilled the holes that I showed you a minute ago and now we're coming in and we're doing an entire inside contour on this profile. So it's just a projected profile here, leaving half a millimetre of stock and it's going to come down and ramp down and with the tortoise in there without putting in another tool or changing the height offsets, I can go um, minus 59 millimetres. Let me just we already take the part, trying to hold the phone. Apologies for that. So yeah, well, I can come down minus 59 mil, which is um, plenty far enough from this side. So we punch the holes in, and when we're doing this contour, we've got areas for the swarf and the chips to go out on the other side. Haven't done the outsides yet, gonna do that in a minute, but I wanna look at what stock I've got close to the um, jaws of the vice because I don't want to touch them. So if you look from the side, you can see that I've got a big chunk of material. It sticks out either side, so I should be fine clearing that, but I haven't got a deep enough tool, unless I would go down with a face wheel or something. I haven't got a deep enough tool to go right down to that depth. Again, I might do the 50 mil. see the neck of the tool is rubbing on that plate because again that's got half a millimetre stock to leave so I think where I'm leaving half a millimetre out on one bit and half a millimetre on the other bit it's actually touching in the middle so hopefully we haven't encroached on a um, actual part itself. I won't know that until we take our finished passes. But obviously that adjustment's relatively easy. We're down at minus 43 on the G54, but the G54 is actually set off of the front height of the flange, which is lower than this back height. So it is gonna be about to finish because that is about it. There we go. Let's just lean in there with a bit of air gun. Right, 
right, see what we got. So, okay, so you can see there, so yeah, a little bit of rubbing on the neck of the tool just there because I was coming right down to just under that shoulder. I could probably get, again, I broke my long reach tool. So, you can see the holes there, that would have allowed a lot of coolant to wash through, all the chips to wash through because you're going not too deep as a pocket, but you're going down there, you know. And you can see from this side that we've got these parts here untouched for when we do our 3D in. So I'll go back over to the computer now and I'm looking at getting rid of basically that chunk of material and a little bit of this, but we won't get full depth on there because it's gonna to be too much and this holder will end up contacting this edge. So where this profile comes around, probably to about here, um, I'll just do it as a, a contouring up here, clear that and a straight line up on both sides. So let's go program that and I'll show you what it looks like on the laptop. Okay, so here's the last bit of side machining that we're gonna do. And it's a straight down, open profile contour, taking the material off these edges. So if you bring in the stock there, you can see it. And then you can see this is what we're taking off. That will just get rid of any excess material at the sides. It's already done that side there. We're just working on the other side. That's a full axial depth of cut, but it's only taken a one mil step over. Could probably go more, but there's no major rush. Axis kind of gets in the way. Okay, so apologies for the noise. There we go. So you can see this big chunk that was up here, we've taken that away, got rid of everything that we kind of need to get rid of there save on this side and now this part is ready um because i haven't got a longer tool to get in there i'm not worried about going any further because we've we've done the center section um way past the halfway line i could have 3d profiled this a bit deeper to be fair knowing that i could have gone 59 millimeters deep with this tool so i probably would have got two or three more mil down there which i might add on next time um because it would start 3D profiling this. I may actually add that on now because what's gonna happen, <clears throat> I've left 0.5 on here. I think it was 0.5. Um, and then you've got 0.25 or 0.5 on here. So everywhere's still got enough to come out. And what I want is I only want the material left for the ball nose to start doing its whole thing, you know, when it does its continuous one mil step over on the whole part and we'll do a like model top we'll do the pro the profile plane down just past halfway so when you select on the ball mill when you're doing that sort of end milling you can have contact point boundary so it will always it will come down until the tool's no longer touching on a cutting face and then of course it will it will carry on with the next bit so that will work fine on here, but it's not gonna work on here because obviously I've still got big chunks of material there. But when you look at it from this edge, there's quite a bit to disappear. At the minute, you can only see this very fine lip there, which is what you're just seeing. You just see there that 3D starts to come out the side of the shape. So I actually wanna remove a bit more of that I wonder if I can select that on its own. Because if not, I've got to add to this cycle and go deeper. And what that's going to do, it's going to make a lot of this cutting fresh air. And these pockets, doing these pockets, is a lot quicker 
I'm going to duplicate it. Tell you what I'm going to do because when I've done all this 3D adaptive in here, if that pocket was there first, the holes were in first, then these pockets, then it's only going to come here, but there's going to be a lot of retraction. So I'll have to work out. Um, I'll maybe duplicate the program, make adjustments on one and see if it makes any difference on the time-wise. But yes, every time I think I'm going to do the last stop on the part, I think there's one more to do. And I think it is definitely 3D in this section here. Again, I'll leave half a millimetre uh, stock to leave. And I may even come down, because we're quite far from each edge, I may use a smaller um, tool there. I've got 12 mil tool in there rather than this big 16. The 16 will do it, um, but we'll see. So I'm going to go back to the computer. I'm going to program that, see if we can get rid of that material. And then hopefully we're ready to flip it over. So bear with me, but I'll bring you back when it's at the laptop. Okay, so we're back on Fusion 360. And what I'm doing is a 3D adaptive strategy again. Now this is only two minutes, 51 seconds. And you'll notice a lot of that is retraction. Um, the yellow moves are retract moves. Red moves are like helical moves. Blue is cutting. Them green ones and that are lead ins and lead outs. So I can trim this down, but when it's two minutes and I've only got to make five of these, it's not gonna make a difference. So I'm not fussed about trimming that just yet. I just wanna see if it works. So. We're gonna run the simulation. And all we wanna make sure is that it's not gonna gouge into anything. And again, I've got stock to leave as 0.5 because I'm happy for 0.5 worth of material when I get to the ball nose or the ball end mill, whichever you wanna call it. All right, so these are the ops that have already been done, but I like to run through them to make sure it has the process of, um, showing exactly what stock's already been removed. Sometimes you can just skip to one. Sometimes I find Fusion kind of gets a bit confused and doesn't know what stock's already gone. So I prefer to just skip through it. There is it just taking them edge pieces, which was the last bit done. Now you'll see it's gonna come over. Start cutting in here. And it is using the 16 mil mil. I didn't drop it down because I wanted the length. You're not gonna see it great on this one. Let's just wait till it moves over. I would reorientate the parts, you see it better, but where I've got the camera in one end, so there you go, you'll see better on this side. This is a lot of fresh air cutting. Now that can be dialed out um, by reducing that pocket shape, but I'm currently just using the pocket that I've already machined. But when it's two minutes, 50 seconds, realistically, what am I gonna save? A minute, it's really, it's gonna take me much longer to try and dial that out and reduce the cutting time, then it will actually cut. So yeah, there's the simulation. And now we've got comparison on. So positive material, green is when you're at the true um, material surface and red is negative. So you can see we're green on this face, negative on the holes because they've been tapped. You get this negative, um, show up in here maybe i'm guessing that's because of the shape because i've followed this shape whereas these are actually got a slight a contour and i'm so small that you couldn't measure it if you tried so that's why it shows it ever such slight stock to leave um but you can see the main thing around here it's not taken any material off so everything has still got positive material in the bit that we've got a 3d mill afterwards and that was my main concern so Let's go over to the machine. I've already got the program loaded. Obviously the tool's already in there from the last op. So we're just gonna go now. I do like on the remote, just having the feed hold 
had everything in my head. Just back that out a bit. It's going to be difficult to really show anything. Lots of um, lots of retract moves and fresh air cutting. But as said, for two minute cycle, it isn't worth the time when you're doing batches of five or 10 parts, you know? Let's say we did 10 parts, saving me half an hour is gonna make absolutely no difference. Realistically, I'm happy to let it run. When it's proven and the parts are running, then I can look at tweaking it in the future, but right now, not a concern of mine. Okay. So this cycle is finished. And there you go, it's 3D'd them two profiles out. So that was, whatever we said, two or three minutes. Let's just blow off some coolant. So yeah, two or three minutes for that cycle. And again, it should have left half a millimetre all around the part. And now I'm happy that that's done. I can't do any more here. So let's, moment of no return, take it out of the vise. To cut my finger on anything. There's a few chips under there, and it's a little bit top heavy now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this off and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so we've got the part on the table after OP2, and now you can see where we're at. So, this is how far we've machined. There's obviously the supplied finished part. So you can see now the shapes of these 3D contours, which is gonna be this bit here. Um, we're level with the top there. We're at the right height on that side of it. So this is gonna be finished face. Obviously we've got this roughing step down here, which is gonna be smoothed off. We can machine that. So now what we're gonna do just look at turning it round, seeing what we can take off on this side. So obviously this was roughed out on op one. And as you see there, we've got quite a bit of material to take off of here still. We've got whatever this distance is on top. So a rough measurement of about 12 millimeters there. And if we go there, so you're gonna have about 85 millimeters wide, half inch thick, all the way across to come off. So that's a bit of weight to come straight off there. And that's before we do this groove. Um, and then we've got this backside here to take off. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do first. Um, we might have a look at the top, but what I was interested to see, if we take this now, so the material starts off as a 20 kilo billet, which is, there's one of the other bits of material there. Just put this here on me surface table. Let's get the scales out. So after op one, we went from 20 kilos to I think it was 10 point, we went from 20.3 to sound like 10.7. And now we're at 7.6. So we took another three kilos of material out of here, roughing out that section and drilling them holes. 
So 7.62. And if we have a look what our finished sample part is, this is what we're gonna be ending up as. 2.2 kilos. So we've still got five, five and a half kilos to come out of that, which is crazy really, because you think over twice that still to be removed off of there before we're at our finished part. So there you go. So yes, another video snippet there. Obviously they can be quite long, but if you guys who wanted to see it, I'll show you all the information step by step, you see what's going on. So there's the video for OP2. Stay tuned. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you like the content. And if you want to see OP3, hit the bell so you can see when I've uploaded new videos. And we'll see you again soon. Cheers for watching.